first alert weather day. Intense storms are moving through our state right now and with the possibility of tornadoes, severe thunderstorms and flooding, our team has declared a WSFA first alert weather day. The risk for severe weather will last until tomorrow morning. The western part of our state is already dealing with heavy rain and strong winds. Central counties are also feeling those conditions. The eastern portion of the state will soon see them as well. For the latest information on this storm, we go to WSFA First Alert meteorologist Amanda Curran in the storm track zone. And you'll want to stay weather aware this weekend with the WSFA First Alert weather app. Our meteorologist will update the forecast there and send out severe weather notifications. You can also use the interactive radar to track rain in your area. Switching gears a bit to a breaking news update now. It's been less than 24 hours since the U.S., the U.K., and France launched a missile strike against three targets. President Trump declares mission accomplished, but the Pentagon admits while the Syrian regime's ability to use chemical weapons has been weakened, it has not been destroyed. Chris Pallone has the details. An independent chemical weapons watchdog group is in Syria now. The group is working to determine whether the alleged chemical weapons attack last Saturday really happened. U.S. military sources say blood samples taken from the people in the area prove that it did. United Nations or not, Russia and Iran are condemning the missile strike. Russia's President Vladimir Putin called the attack an act of aggression. Meanwhile, Russian military officials claim that out of the 103 missiles fired, 71 were shot down by the Syrian air defenses. That claim has yet to be verified. Alabama Senator Doug Jones says he supports the president's decision to launch strategic airstrikes against Syria. In a statement released today, Jones says in part, it is my hope, as General Mattis stated last night, that Assad gets the message this time and that further action, which should be done with congressional approval, will not be necessary. At least three more Alabama congressional leaders have come forward supporting the move. Well, the city of Birmingham was in court on Friday. The city is facing a possible $6 million fine for covering up the Confederate monument in Lynn Park. Raycom reporter Alan Collins was there as attorneys for the city and the state battled it out. Both sides will have to file additional legal briefs over the next month and a half. After that, Judge Graffio will start to work on a judgment to decide the fate of that Confederate monument. Well, Alabama has been ranked as the best state if you want to work for the gun industry. According to the career site Zipia, Alabama is the best when it comes to factors such as jobs and gun control. Alabama only has 10 gun laws and more than 3,000 people working in the industry. Right now, rounding out the top five are Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, and Arizona. Well, today in Montgomery, a special camp designed to help kids and teens find closure in the loss of a loved one. Baptist Hospice hosted the 11th annual camp celebration. It's a bereavement camp for people ages 5 to 16. There are fun things like food and games, but those participating also learn coping skills they can use during the grieving process. At the end of the one day camp, officials hold a memorial service for the kids to honor their lost loved ones and hopefully feel a sense of closure.